Designated Survivor Episode 8, The Results. This is actually a pretty crazy episode. We have Atwood being, you know, manipulated by this mysterious woman. We have Weller tracking him down. Um, Catalan ends up finding out that Weller is tracking down Atwood. Uh, that doesn't actually culminate to anything in this episode, which really surprised me. I was, admittedly, I'm like, I was surprised the guy didn't just have a bomb ready to go to blow up Weller's car or something crazy like that. But I figured she wouldn't actually die. But... He's onto her. Um, she knows that Atwood is being uh, manipulated, and of course, he tells her like, "Hey, look up um, like this specific, you know, this kind of this random case, so that she has a clue as to what's going on." So, I'm curious how that's going to play out. I mean, of course, he'll just say like, "Oh, I didn't tell her to follow me," or you know, of course, I didn't know that she was following me or anything like that. So, hopefully, that works out. I mean, these people, you know, they're crazy conspiracy theory stuff. So. Who knows what they're really going to do and how it's going to play out for um, Atwood and his son. But at this point, uh, Atwood is pretty screwed. Because he goes in and he says, hey, I'm the one. Yeah, of course he wasn't exactly nonchalant like that. But, you know, they tell him to say that he was the one that killed off basically the only lead that they have. Like the only true lead that the entire country has. He has to go in there and say, yeah, I'm, I'm the one that did that. And I like the way they did that sequence. Um, and he goes in and he has to, you know, he has to tell Kirsten, like, hey, I, I did this. I was the one that killed him. And I felt that it was my civic duty to take him out because I don't want my son to grow up in a world like, you know, where bad people like this get to live on and things like that. And he even tells him, like, you know, to, excuse me, to push the button and they do it in slow motion. And he gets up and the people... Half a sec. It makes sense. It's the White House. But he pushed that button and like six people just come in instantaneously it seemed. So, you know, I love the way they did that sequence where he does it. You know, he has to for his son. That's what he has to do. And, of course, Kirkland is like, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So he, he wants some he wants some research done. And they started up and, of course, um, Weller is told not to say anything. So whoever is giving her these clues has i would assume they have the same tie-in to the secret company of course because they know the information but it's very interesting how it's you know how it's playing out because they say like hey don't you know say anything um to shore and initially i thought that was because of you know catalan because like oh hey she was following him and she took pictures she has pictures of you so we need to kind of let her know that we're on to her so, it didn't really have anything to, to do with that just yet. It was simply, we know that they're going to call in people as basically like, almost like a character witness sort of thing to see if this kind of seems legit. Like, why would I would actually do this? So, I thought that was interesting when she ends up getting the number uh, from her buddy and it ends up being the same person that called her. I was like, oh, I thought this was going to be like a, so, you know, someone else that told her not to do that. So, I thought that was really interesting. And the woman's like, you know, I'm not going to meet you, but look up 1114. And I don't know if that has to do with their meeting time, but it seemed to be that way because it was already night. I don't know how late it was because they don't talk about, you know, the time frame of things. But it was already nighttime when she was on the phone. And then it went to, uh, like, basically the ending scene was, um, I forgot his name, but the guy who will probably end up being vice president. He ends up meeting the woman outside and it's, it's nighttime. And I was like, is that they always meet at 11, 14 at night on certain days or, you know, how is that supposed to really play out? So I don't think that it was, it was actually 11, 14 that night, but there was something to do with 11, 14, either with their meetings at night or 11, 14 on that specific day, something else happened that of course no one else is paying attention to because, you know, the Congress was destroyed. So it's, it's kind of one of the two, and I think it might have something to do with another event that's, you know, not getting a lot of attention just yet, because it took place during all the chaos, you know, of that night, and at 11.14 that night, something extra happened, so, like I said, I'm, I'm very curious how that's going to play out, but there's a lot of other good stuff in this episode as well, um, we had the scene early on in the episode where the random reporter just goes up to Kirkland's son. He's like, hey, so what do you think of the rumor that uh, your dad's not your dad? So shattered his his mind uh, for like the whole episode. And I like that story. I actually enjoyed the way that played out. It started just with that little seed and it's like, you know, and I was happy the way it went because it was so fast paced. 
you know, he even left school. And the first thing he did was just like, like I don't know how to ask you this, but are you really my dad? And it's like you know, him you know getting hit with all this information. I love that. I was like, I was glad that it was so fast paced. It bothered him so much. It was, and that makes a lot of sense too. Like that would mess with you so much. You're like school just is nothing means anything at this point. Like my dad might not be my dad. So I was glad that it was such a fast paced moment. And the way they do the story where, you know, they get the results and stuff. And no one really knows the results. And I was glad they showed it because I was like, I'm super curious. I, I was honestly, I wasn't sure if they were going to kind of leave us wanting and just never show us either. But I was like, man, I'm super curious. I'm like, I hope somebody opens this type of thing up because I want to know. Like, it ultimately, yeah, it doesn't matter. But it's just that curiosity of it being there. And so, you know, they go through the episode and his son decides I don't actually need to look because he got some pretty epic advice uh, from the security guy. So he's like, hey, you know, I didn't know my biological father, but that'll just tell you results. It'll tell you biology, but not really who your dad was. So kind of just keep that in mind. He leaves him with that bit of advice and he decides not to open it. But fortunately, uh, Kirkland opens it and he goes to the reporter who we find out kind of sucks, which is very unfortunate. You know, Seth, kind of talked with her and she was like yeah you know i won't run the story but she pawned it off on the other guy so you know it kind of sucked but uh currently goes in is like hey probably won't be much of a story now but i got the results and i am actually i am biologically you know my son's father so this guy's got nothing anymore so that was cool um i'm very curious like what would have happened though if it was the opposite like would he have actually gone to her and told her the truth that you know as well or would have changed things up, but it doesn't matter because he is his, his son's father. I was about to say father's son, but he is his son's father, and I just like the way that storyline played out through the episode, and you know, the ups and downs they had to deal with, like, you know, he's president, so he's got a million other things going on, and it's just like, his son got bombarded, he has to, you know, he talks to Seth, like, can you figure out how the heck this story got out there if she was the only one that did it? And she, like, she flat out lied to Seth. Like, I don't know why she thought that that was going to work. Like, oh, it must have been the editor or something. <laughs> I don't know why she thought that would work either. But, you know, ultimately they find out the truth of exactly how everything's worked. Or how everything uh, has worked out with her and what she decided to do. And then we have um, just the whole election coming up. It's supposed to be, like, the day, um, you know, most of this episode takes place in one day. And then the next day is when, you know, the polls open and everything. And they have, like, ricin attacks and stuff like that. And one woman actually dies from it. And, you know, Kirkland, Kirkland decides, like, he's going to keep the polls open to kind of honor this woman. Like, for those who want to still do this, you can. For anyone who's in fear of it, of course you can stay home. And that's what a ton of people did at first because, you know, they all go to vote. Which, that, that was something that happened in this episode. There's some things that this show does that I never think of. But it's like, oh, yeah. Everyone in the White House still votes. You know, like, you, you still vote. It's nothing special. You still have to go to a specific place to vote. And it was so funny seeing that. I was like, oh, yeah. I remember I only found out that the president could vote. Like, I think I found that out um, when Obama first did, uh, first ran and everything. I was like, I didn't know the president could vote for himself. And my dad was like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Like, I didn't know you could do that until that happened. So, that was, you know, seeing it this episode where everyone leaves, I was like, oh, yeah, duh. You know, if the president can vote for himself, of course, everyone in the White House goes to vote. And it was just so weird seeing that. I was like, huh. It's just weird thinking that, like, you know, everyone in the White House votes for who's president or even, you know, in this case, uh, the new Congress and, and stuff like that. But it was just a, it was just a meat moment. I was just like, oh, yeah, they they would all, of course, have to leave to vote because you can still vote if you're in the White House. So it, it just it was just a funny thing for me. But they go there. The polls are basically empty. There is one person and there's one woman in there. And then, you know, of course, the people at the tables. But it was like, oh, man, you know, they were kind of worried. Like, they because um, he has a great line where he's like, you know, a Congress voted in by... I think he said, like, 10% of the population is hardly even a Congress. And, you know, of course, they call me an illegitimate president. They'll call this an illegitimate Congress. And I like that. But then, of course, the polls pick up, and they have, you know, the great news piece where it's like, you know, when uh, Polish were asked why they decided to finally go, a lot of them said it was because President Kirkland went. Like, he went, and he, you know, risked his life. And then, of course, they find out, like, oh, you know, we 
basically got everything. Like, it was just that one location, or, like, the couple of locations, but it was just that one guy, you know, working by himself. So, everything was perfectly fine. No one else was in danger or anything like that. So, it was a nice uh, little victory on top of finding out that he is truly his son's father. So, we had some really nice little moments there at the end, and then we have all the other stuff surrounding him that he doesn't even know about yet. So, still very excited for where this is going. Um, they have a pretty cool little confrontation before uh, the guy ends up meeting, like, this mystery woman. When he goes and talks to the congresswoman, and she's like, you know, I don't understand why you have all this loyalty and stuff. Like, you know he gets in his own way, you know, make, make him self fall. And she's like, unless that's what you want. And, of course, he plays it off like, I, you have an overactive imagination. She's like, oh, okay. Well, I don't think I do. So when I decide, you know, when I take him down... I'll make sure that you're not standing either. So now they kind of know where they stand with each other while also both working to kind of take out Kirkland, which really sucks. So he's got two people against him who aren't even with each other. So it's just crazy. But I really love this episode. I like how tense it got. There are a lot of different storylines and everything I felt was really fast paced. It was like, here's an issue. Here's a problem. This got to be fixed. That's got to be fixed. This is still an insane mystery going on where people are being manipulated and sons are kidnapped and but who knows how much further it's going to go. But definitely a fun episode. Of course, would love to know what you guys thought about it. So please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, at least favorite parts. And as far as going into the stuff with, you know, even deeper into the FBI storyline, I want to know, um, what your predictions are as far as this 1114 thing um it's kind of wide open at this point but i would love to know your predictions on that and also what's going to happen with weller because we know or you know like i said the thing with catalan you know seeing her on the rooftop and stuff that didn't go anywhere in this episode but it has to come up later either he's going to do something personally or he's going to tell this secret organization and that's when they're going to start to do something so i want to know your predictions on you know basically where all of that stuff is headed and of course what you guys thought about the episode in general so please comment below let me know and thanks for watching